We all love an egg dish and a mimosa, but brunch reservations can be so hard to come by. That's why I opted to make it myself. Today, I'll show you the easy way to a fantastic brunch spread for you and your friends. We'll start the make ahead magic with my easy bread and butter pudding, then my effortless spinach artichoke braid, and finally my overnight tropical fruit salad. Before brunch, I'll show you the easy way to make bacon for a crab, then my ranch roasted potatoes, and I'll round out the spread with my creamy herbed baked eggs. Join me as I show you the easy make ahead way to brunch at home. I'm Josh Abrams, and I'll show you how the sausage is made. Friends, a warning. I'm about to do something really stupid that resulted in two bandages and an unsightly blue glove. Don't be like me. Oh, <laughs> Cut things carefully and look at your damned hands when you're doing it. Bread and butter pudding begins with the making of butter and jam sandwiches. I spread half of the loaf with a teaspoon of apricot preserves per slice. And the other half with one teaspoon of softened butter per slice, joining them into sandwiches once all are covered. I cut all the sandwiches in half diagonally and arranged them in a two and a half quart casserole with the triangle points alternating directions and a few of the sandwich halves tucked in on either side. This may seem unnecessarily fussy, but once I make the custard, it will all make sense. The custard begins with three eggs and three egg yolks, which will be prepared using the quarantine method. Breaking exactly one egg into a small bowl before checking it for any debris, then gently cradling the yolk in my fingers to separate. Discard the whites, or save them to make a pavlova, but that's a different episode. I whisk the eggs to break them up, add sugar and whisk again, then add remaining ingredients and whisk until thoroughly combined. I pour this mixture over my prepared sandwiches in the casserole, taking care to moisten everything evenly. I then dot the surfaces protruding from the custard with butter. All of that specific layering has produced a maximum of these pointy bits, which will get extra crispy and delicious when baked tomorrow. I covered the casserole with foil and placed it in the fridge. I could have certainly put this together in the morning, but it definitely benefits from the overnight rest in the refrigerator in addition to making morning prep for brunch less stressful. More about that later.
Next, we're going to tackle the spinach artichoke braid. This is not the first time I've used store buff pastry on this show, and it won't be the last. It's convenient and versatile. Before I get started on the spinach artichoke braid, uh, I've got some puff pastry waiting in the freezer for us. Uh, it has been thawed, but it was getting a little warm, so I went ahead and tossed it back in the freezer. Let's see, I've got this. I can leave this on the parchment to help me get it back and forth. Um, I also have my rolling pin in the freezer. Keep it cold, I have a metal one. Um, that is the thing you want to make sure you're doing when you're using puff pastry is just making sure everything is staying very, very cold. All right, so we've got this flattened to a about an eighth of an inch. And then we're gonna need a piece to cutter. And you see how the we'll use the uh, uh, the fold lines here in our uh, in our pastry to help us. And we're just gonna roll one inch strips along the sides, just up to the middle seam. Do the same on the other side. All right, and we're going to pop this back in the freezer so that it stays nice and cold while we make, uh, make the filling. Filling itself is really simple. We've got half a block, we're going to take half a block of cream cheese. Don't worry, you'll use the other half for, uh, for your baked eggs. A fully thawed 10 ounce box of chopped spinach, which we're going to drain uh, fully and then add to the uh, to the uh, cream cheese. Really make sure you press out as much of the liquid as possible. We started with a 10 ounce box of spinach, and as you can see, we have a lot less uh, less than that left after we've squeezed out a fair amount of the water. Also, we're going to add about a quarter cup of marinated artichokes, which I'm going to chop after I measure them out. Good quarter cup. Just going to quickly run my knife through those. Add those to the bowl. going to add two garlic cloves that I'm just going to through the grater really quick. That's all we need to do with that. And we've got a teaspoon of dry thyme, a half a teaspoon of red pepper flake. We're also going to add a couple of teaspoons of Worcester and about a half a teaspoon of hot sauce. And we're just going to mix that very thoroughly. Also going to add a quarter cup of grated Parmesan and add some salt. Pepper. Also going to add the zest and juice from one lemon, which is about. Uh, we're going to go for about a teaspoon, uh, a teaspoon of the zest and about a tablespoon of the lemon juice. That's really about half a lemon's worth of both.
and that is thoroughly mixed. So we're gonna set that back aside again. Pull our dough back out. Leave it right on the sheet where it is, basically. And then we're gonna take the filling and pat it into a rectangle, leaving the side, uh, the side thirds uncovered and an inch on either end. As you can see, the filling itself is pretty stiff, so it, it should stay where you want to uh, want to keep it. Just want to pat it into a nice rectangle. Now, I'm going to take the ends and flip them up 90 degrees and snug them up to the sides of your filling. And you can also push your filling out to fill it up a little bit. Same thing on the other side here. Flip that up. to come undone and just pinch into place. All right. So now that we've got this all in place and the sides of the ends are secure, we're gonna start wrapping the edges over the top one after the other, slightly angled toward one side. Doesn't have to be super angled, but it does need to be a little bit angled because you do want to give yourself the idea that it is moving, uh, that there is some movement here. A little bit. And we're just alternating strips. And crimp it a little bit at the bottom. And that is your completed braid. You just need to brush the outside with a little bit of beaten egg before you toss it into the oven. And we're gonna put everything into the fridge, uh, into the freezer for now uh, until tomorrow morning. I forgot to put the, the cheese in it. Again. All right. I'm also going to like freely admit that I, I, I totally had a stoner moment and. All right. So you'll notice that, uh, that there's some spinach on the edge of this because I started to wrap it up without putting the cheese on top. So we've got some shredded Swiss here and I'm just going to put about two ounces all over the top here. And then I'm going to wrap up the edges and put it in the fridge. Doesn't need to be super precious. Ideally your cheese is going to bubble out a little bit anyway. This part is gloriously forgiving. Up until this part you do want to make sure it's super cold but once you're doing the braiding part step it's gloriously forgiving and it does not require a lot of effort. Um, but anyways, that is now properly filled and braided. And we're gonna go ahead and put that in the fridge. All right. Last on the agenda for today, I'm going to put together the fruit salad. I start by prepping the pineapple. 
I cut the top and bottom off the pineapple, then shaved down the sides to take the skin off, including the tough eyes. I cut it into quarters, then cut the lighter colored tough core from the interior of each quarter and dice. We'll perform the same operation with the watermelon, trimming off the stem and blossom ends, then carving off the white pith. Dice finely, but no core to take out of the watermelon. Next, I'll prepare the mango. I cut down along either of the flatter sides, approximately a half inch from the midline of the fruit, to separate the flesh from the lard stone. I gently use the tip of my knife to make cuts through the flesh, but not the skin, in a grid pattern. Popping off the pieces with a spoon. Then I sectioned the oranges. I again started by removing the stem and blossom ends and cutting down the sides to remove the skin. Once that was completed, I cradled the orange carefully in my hand and used a thin bladed paring knife to cut the sections of orange flesh from between the membranes one at a time. I then squeeze the juice from one orange, after sectioning, over the fruit that was already in my bowl. I'll peel the kiwis in the same way, using a Y peeler to remove a majority of the skin before dicing. Finally, I hold and quartered a pint of strawberries and added them. Fresh mint here is vital, and I want about a quarter cup of chopped mint leaves scattered over. Then I'll add the brown sugar, vanilla extract, dark rum, a few grinds of salt, and plenty of black pepper. I'll toss everything together thoroughly, lit up, and fridge until morning.
In the morning, I'll come down about an hour before I expect to eat to get started with my prep. I have two ovens, so I'll be able to cook everything just about at once. But if you lack the requisite real estate to manage everything that way, I'd recommend starting about an hour and a half before you want to eat, cooking your bacon and the spinach braid first, replacing the bacon with the potatoes, then replacing the braid with the eggs and the bread pudding. Everything cooks at the same temperature, so it's just a matter of shuffling things in and out. The bacon and the spinach braid will stand at room temp better than the other options. I'll get started by reheating my oven to 400 and popping the bread and butter pudding in and placing the spinach braid on a small baking sheet lined in parchment. It needs to cook for 30 to 40 minutes or until golden brown. Once it goes in the oven, we'll go ahead and make some bacon. So today I'm going to show you the easiest way to make bacon for a kraut. I've got a half sheet pan here. I've lined it with uh, parchment paper. Uh, you'll see the parchment paper goes all the way around each side. And we're going to take, uh, do this the simple way. I've got some thick cut bacon here and we're just going to layer this, place this in a single layer as close as I can get them. And there we have all of our bacon in a nice, even, single layer. And we're going to place this in a preheated 400 degree oven for uh, about 12 minutes at least. We're going to start checking it then and uh, keep looking at it after that. Um, also, your potatoes and your spinach braid will cook at the same temperature, so you can let all three of those cook at the same time. In my mind, no brunch or breakfast spread is ever truly complete without a gleaming pile of crispy roasted potatoes. This is my method for any time I want those tangy, herby, oniony potatoes with low effort. I take a 24 ounce bag of new potatoes from the grocery, wash and half them. Toss them with half a stick of melted butter. Then toss again with a pack of ranch seasoning. And spread them on a foil lined baking sheet. I bake them in a 400 degree oven until tender inside and crisp outside, about 40 to 50 minutes. I put the bread and butter pudding in to cook for 45 minutes and start on the eggs. For the herbed baked eggs, which is hardly a recipe, I take a dozen eggs, beat them together with a quarter cup of cream, salt, pepper, and about a quarter cup of fresh herbs. Here I used basil, parsley, and chives, but improvisation here is ideal. Pour into a baking dish liberally sprayed with cooking spray, which I do in the sink to reduce the amount of grease that goes everywhere. I dot it with the remaining half block of cream cheese left over from the spinach braid and bake it at 400 for about 34 minutes. Once the eggs are in the oven, I can relax and enjoy my guests who have started to filter in by now.
giant round socket.